Good afternoon, Marlon. How you doing? You well? Yes, my brother. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good, Joe. Good, good. You're looking well, man. You're looking good. You're looking good on this uh, on this Monday afternoon. Listen, we're here to talk about a few things. Um, KushCinemas.com, KushCinema.com, um, as well as you're stepping back from Kush Films in, you know, as the face, the guy at the front who's led the way for the you know, best part of 25 years now. So for those who don't know what Kush Films are, I don't, know where they, I, I don't know where they've been, um, but you are stepping down. I saw, I saw you think, I think you made that announcement public now. Um, talk about your decision to step back from Kush Films. And for those who don't know, what is Kush Films all about? Well, um, just to correct you, um, I'm, I'm, I'm basically just stepping back from the, um, our events platform, which is the, the Kush Film Boutique. So basically, I'm more kind of stepping back from that in, in terms of, you know, having to be running around organising physical events and also being the face of that, um, as I have been for, for 23 years, 24 years next year. So 23 years of being the face of, um, and everything started, obviously, with our events, with the Kush Film Boutique. Uh, um, formerly known as the Kush Film Club. So the film club was a platform for putting, you know, black films on the big screen, taking black films into UK cinemas, being one of the, being one of the first to do that, uh, starting in 1998, and, um, uh, you know, create public access to black films on the big screen, and supporting independent sh- um, short filmmakers, as well as international filmmakers, you know, uh, mainstream films, as well as independent films. But just plenty more black films on the screen and really, you know, um, creating awareness of films that, that's been released, um, supporting independent filmmakers, as I said. Really, yeah, just 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 opening the door. Uh, you know, now it's all taken for granted and now you have so many other others doing screenings and stuff. But when we started, it was, you know, um, this was, even black people told me it wouldn't work. My own black people said it wouldn't work. <laughs> so, you know, um, I basically created a job for myself out of nothing. And um, I believed that it would work. Now, today, you have many other exhibitors out there screening black films, which is very much needed. And hopefully there are new ones coming up uh, as well who want to get into that side of things and, and screen films. Yeah, what you're pointing to is being a trailblazer, really being, you know, a lone warrior in that space many moons ago before technology has sort of grabbed everybody um, in the way that it has and allowed the proliferation of all these other organisations who pretty much uh, deliver a similar a similar service. Talk about um, being a trail, trailblazer in this next space that you're transitioning to, which is Kush Cinema, um, a VOD platform, video on demand platform, um, doing all the same things that Kush Films are doing, right? All the things that Kush Boutique was doing, all the things you've been doing, focused on black film and filmmakers. Talk about it. Yeah, so, um, you know, um, this, is, this is almost like, you know, um, I won't say a miracle, I was going to say almost a miracle that it happened because, again, it's something that I wanted to do for a long time, but just didn't place the focus on, the focus on it and just didn't have the right intention to make it happen. So basically, you know, um, everything basically conspired. So... All, all the recent negative things, bad things, you know, COVID, basically, the lockdown, and also the murder of George Floyd, really converged to bring what is now, as far as I'm concerned, and you know, um, I don't think there's no one can tell me different, you know, this is the first, the UK's first Black-owned, VOD, video on demand um, platform showcasing the best in black cinema. And basically, you know, it's, to make it explain it a bit more easier, because, you know, we seem to sort of um, understand things, you know, <laughs> on our WhatsApp groups and things like that, when someone says, oh, this is a black Netflix or this is a black uh, Amazon. So you can put it kind of something like that, basically. But obviously, I'm not trying to be no Netflix. I'm not trying to be no Amazon. I'm trying to be Kush. Um, I'm trying to be, you know, as different as I've always been from day one, um, as independent as we've always been from day one, and, you know, build a platform that people now can actually go online and watch Black films online, pay to watch it. Um, it's, a, it's a unique platform. It's, um, it's a hybrid 
So it's basically, it's going to have subscription. The subscription hasn't arrived yet. The subscription part of it is going to be coming around the end of January, February. But at the moment, it's what, what they call T, TVOD in the industry, which is transactional VOD. That means you can pay one-off transaction and you can watch films. So you can pay $2.99, $3.99, $4.99, whatever the price is, $9.99 to watch an old classic new or rare, rare film, you know, as well as, um, you know, looking to have all the genre of films, action, thriller, sci-fi, love, romance, whatever, uh, as well as um, children's, um, so a, a children's selection as well. So um, we're looking to, I'm looking to support independent filmmakers as well and have short films on there as well and do short, uh, we're going to have a short film showcase section where we want to highlight profile and showcase new filmmakers with you know new talented filmmakers with a body of work basically so we want to you know as well as try and help filmmakers make money as well by packaging you know say say if they have you know two or three short films packing just into a put this into a package and then asking people to pay for it as if they were going to just buy a normal film basically so and and we're looking to you know um allocate 50% of that, whatever we, we, we make from putting on events and stuff, um, special screenings to to the filmmakers, basically. So, you know, we have to support the filmmakers and help them to generate revenue from their short films so, so they can go again and make more films, basically. Um, so, you know, and this is one of the key things about the platform. The platform basically is, it's not just about, oh, a place where, where you can, you know, uh, my, my people, the public, and it's not only just for for black people. It's it's for, it's for anyone that that really supports, uh, respects, and appreciate you know the, the black cultural experience and you know black films as a whole. Basically, um, you know you know so it's for everyone: white, black, pink, brown, or yellow. Um, and you know the, the key thing about the platform kushcinema.com is that basically. It's also now one of the first distribution outlets for black filmmakers in the UK. So it's, 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 as well as you can go and watch films, it's the, the important, for me, the very important thing about it, uh, you know, is that it basically is a distribution outlet. So it enables me to basically, basically distribute films across the world. No borders, no boundaries. And again, you know, um, this is a very, very important thing that you know because we always have to be begging others to be on their platforms to get our film distributed and then now with netflix and with um amazon i mean these platforms have so much content on there you, you know your content very often is lost in a sea of content and people that actually have to know it's there to actually find it or they sort of come across it accidentally or something you know so um you know our platform is, is going to be focused on black film content and people know that they can go there. It's a one-stop shop where you can go and find the content that you're looking for. Um, you know, hopefully we'll have it. Most of the time we will have it. Um, and that's, you know, that all depends on where we can get the rights from the people who control the rights. You know, um, and this is where we're looking to change the game now, that where people, filmmakers will be coming to us from the off, you know, at first to do deals where we can have, you know, you know um, the rights for their content. You know, at the moment we have to go to the BFI, British Film Institute. We have to go to other the film distributors who control all the black content. And we have to ask them for the films. Now, you know, what's going to happen in down the road if they see, see us start getting successful and maybe don't like it, they, they, they decide not to want to give us their films anymore. So, you know, this is something that we need to really carefully think about. It's something that um, I'm, you know, I'm sort of prepared for going forward. But um, just aren't, quickly... aren't, 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 sorry to cut you. Sorry to cut you. Yeah. Aren't, par aren't partnerships a way to alleviate that though? If you're your own entity, and aren't, aren't, isn't there a way to because what you talk about seems to be a conflict when really you're in the same area, which is movies? I guess the more you grow, the more you evolve, people will be more receptive to partnering with you. Would that would that not be the case? Well, I would I would like to think so, and I would like to hope so. You never know. Some 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 may some may not like your success, or may not like that it, it's 
you know, um, you, you're being you're, you 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 are taken away from from what they're doing or whatever. But uh, yeah, you, I would like to think so. I mean, already that is the case for me because obviously I've been in the industry for so long, and a lot of the film distributors know me. And you know, for instance, um, you know, Verve Pictures, who Verve Pictures, are, 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 I met many years ago because they they put out the film Bullet Boy originally, um, starring starring Ashley Waters. And um, they also put out the film Gone Too Far, and I worked with them on the film Gone Too Far, um, a British comedy film um, made by Destiny, Destiny um, Ekaragra. Um, and um, they, when I went to them, they basically were very supportive, gave me all their films and said, yeah, it's a great idea, Marlon, and let's put your film, put our films on your platform. They didn't even charge me for that. Where a lot of other distributors, just to even get the assets, to get the, 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 the films, once I've done the, the, the agreement, there's a cost for them just to send it over. So, you know, every time you may have to pay 50 quid just to get the assets for them to send it to you. And, you know, obviously, you know, they have to do a bit of work to prepare it, send, it, send over the film, the trailer, the the images and the synopsis and all that kind of stuff. So they charge you for that. So imagine, you know, every time, if I want to get a hundred films, I've got to pay 50 pounds a pop every time I want, I, I want a film. So there's, there's, you know, great cost just in doing that. Well, so, I guess, I guess the more successful you become, the, the more, um, I guess those costs will be met in terms of, you know, supply well, demand. People yeah, well, that's people the whole question your service. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and that is the hope. That is the hope. It's it's not something that's going to hinder me or, or think or stop me from doing what I want to do. Um, you could do what you got to do at the end of the day. And if you want certain films and they're charging you that money, then you 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 got to pay that. What, what can you do? I mean, obviously, some of them, some are you know. It, uh, I mean, you're able to negotiate deals, so uh, I am able to recruit recuperate some of those 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 initial costs um, from sales. Some won't let, allow you to re, re, recuperate those costs, but you know you just got to do what you got to do, um, especially when you're starting out. You know, you know, and and, and there is a plan. Um, but just quickly spinning back as well, just starting, just 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 again a, the inspirational story about how this came about. You know, the UK's first black-owned VOD platform, and it, again it was during COVID, and it, for, for me, uh, um, for many years, you know, um, I've been thinking about you know, doing something online and creating my own sort of platform online. And this is mainly because of someone that I, uh, that I sort of um, developed a good relationship with. And, you know, it, it's a good friend of mine, um, a guy called Philip, who is a white man, um, a, 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 you know, um, who basically owns the international company, i to i and they build all the VOD sites for a lot of the film production companies and also film distribution companies and for a lot of um, independent filmmakers who, who can afford it. So they build screening rooms. People can, you know, they build screen, virtual screening rooms for filmmakers and production companies so they can show their films um, privately to clients and internally. And they also build VOD sites for MGM, Lionsgate, um, lots of other, you know, BFI, Film London. So, I, you know, I'm fortunate to, to know Philip. Um, and met him many years ago at, at a trade show. We've become friends over the, over the years. And I've even sort of driven to, 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 to the Cannes, Cannes Film Festival um, in France from over here in his van with him to help him because he does all the audio visual, does a lot of stores and stuff for a lot of big film distributors out there, sets up the audio visual. So during COVID, you know, I, I was at home there, like everyone else, the film industry is locked down, suffering. What's the future going to hold? You know, what's going to happen? Then, then the George Floyd incident happened. And that was just, you know, big shock, total shock, anger, um, you know, and just really just kind of gave me a big boot, boot up the derriere, as, as, as you know, um, we would say the British would say, <laughs> you know, uh, up the arse, basically, and basically, um, just really reminded me that for the last couple of years, also, I have really been thinking about ownership. About you know, I'm just fed up of us begging others to be part of their platform, part of their networks, part of their system, you know, and when they let one or two of us through, we're we're just so happy about that, and it's a big thing, it's a big deal, but we're not really making a lot of noise about building our own platform, building our own networks, building our own distribution channels, building our own cinemas, whatever, building our own, 
You know, if you go to America, they have similar issues like us, but the African-American community have their own. They have distribution. They have their own TV networks. You know, they have, um, you know, forms of distribution. You know, Ava DuVernay has their own distribution company. Um, they have ownership. You know, they own you know um production companies you know you obviously you got the tyler perry's you got you got other and others out there who are doing similar things um we don't have that over here and it doesn't seem like we're trying to do that occasionally you hear about someone you know trying to do it but it just hasn't materialized um you know there's recent reports of a, um, a guy i forgot his name now who wants to build a, a studio out here, a film production studio black owned film sort of tyler perry sort of thing so let's see what comes of that but you know, um, one of the key things for me recently over the last few years has been ownership, 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 ownership. Start owning things, you know, um, so, you know, stop begging other people for things. So when the George Floyd incident happened to me, you know, it just hit me like a brick. We need to, I need to, I want to own my own thing now. I, we need to start doing our own thing. These people are, are you know, this is, this is, they, they, they're forever going to be holding us back. They're forever going to be hating us. They're forever, forever going to, you know, be, have some sort of indifference to us. So only way for us to really be successful and, and maybe not even right now, but going down the line, you know, our children and our grandchildren, it's to start having that, that 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 notion that intent to start owning our own um outlets our own platforms our own found building our own foundations so i reached out to philip and i said look i, I want to build my own i'm ready to build my own platform now on build a vod platform something like never been done before in the country and um he was very receptive to this and you know he felt bad about the whole george floyd incident as well and he said you know what Marlon." he's been wanting to kind of give back and do something for a while. You know, his company is doing quite well. And he said, don't worry about it. <laughs> he's going to help me. He's going to help me. He said, don't worry about the cost and all that kind of stuff. Um, we'll work that out as we go along and, you know, give me time to, to get that sorted, but let's get to work. So you're, you're, you mentioned, you know, people are going to naturally talk about you being the Amazon and the Netflix and you just want to be cush. And I understand that. What, um, does success look like then? What type of market share are you after, Marlon? I mean, how do how do you kind of leave an indelible mark on the industry with this platform um, that puts you alongside those brands? Because if we're not trying to be like them, we're definitely trying to attain that success, right? Yeah, well, obviously, yeah, I would love to attain attain some sort of success like that. But obviously, you can understand what sort of levels especially now, I don't think people, unless you're in the industry, people don't really understand what levels Netflix and Amazon is on. I mean, you can remember Jeff, Jeff Bezos, who owns Amazon Prime, you know, Amazon is one of the richest men in the world. You know, Netflix is spending now budgets similar to what mainstream film distributors are to make films, 200 million. You know, Netflix can afford to do that. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a way, 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 no, long way. And people need to understand that because the first thing, you know, our people, you know what they're like, they want to go on this site and say, oh, yeah, oh, they got this on at Netflix and they got this on Amazon, they got that. And it's like, they, you know, you got to understand, no, we are not Amazon. We want to emulate the way they do things. But, you know, there's, gonna be, there's, a, there's a long journey. And, uh, you know, I can't remember how long Netflix has been going now, but they've been going a good number of years now. You know, this is, we're just at the beginning of the journey. Obviously, I can learn a lot from what those guys have done and I can emulate a lot of that and look to to capitalise on that and take shortcuts and move a lot faster. But the key thing for me here right now is investment. The key, key thing is investment, you know, and building um, a, a solid, solid, you know, um, visionary team around me that can really take this platform on, you know, uh, until to the levels that I think it can it can get to basically, and be you know real a real how can I say be really significant within the film distribution film exhibition um, fields, you know, um, yeah. And um, also, it, and, and, yeah, and just to say, so whatever, there's a key aspect of Kush Cinema as well, which, which we haven't mentioned yet, is that Kush Cinema, Kush Cinema, I'm looking for that to be 
um, we, we, we're building an archive as well. I want it to be an archive of Black British film history. So we're building an archive. I am looking to get some funding for this and because I want to do it properly. I, I, I want to build an archive that shows our history and it shows it from our perspective as Black people, not from other people's perspective, because our, our history has always been told from someone else's perspective. And then they, they select in a film that we don't always agree with, basically, that are the best films or the best directors or whatever, um, because they obviously have a different view and perspective of our history, and they also haven't lived it as well. So, um, you know, the key, key thing is building, it's going to be an archive. It's going to be an archive, a special section in Christian Cinema that's going to show our history from the 1940s, 50s, 60s, you know, coming right up to present day, because a lot of people kind of forget that, you know, we had black personalities on TV in the 19, in the, uh, in, in, I know definitely in the 50s, possibly the late 40s, um, where we, you know, we had um, black personalities with their own TV shows, surprisingly, in, in, in those times. You know, it didn't start in the 60s and the 70s. didn't start when Noel Clark came around. It didn't start, it started way before, but that story needs to be told. It's been forgotten. And there's other people who are trying to control the narrative and control our story and, uh, and our, our history. The true history needs to be represented and needs to be told and needs to be put there for younger people, younger people to have as a resource, as a resource that they can learn from, whether it's through school or whether it's whether it's it's through their at home personally, you know, or through 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 fam through their family. You you might not say it, so I'll say it and I hope it becomes as big as Netflix because uh I don't know if you've read um That Will Never Work, which is written by the co-founder of of Netflix. If you haven't read it, it's a great book. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. and um he details, you know, that moment when his wife said, Well, you know, that will never work. And uh, well, we know what Netflix is today, so it's a great book. Yeah, no, absolutely. I've, I've, I've listened to um, but, but, lots listen, of. Yeah, I, I, no, I'm, I'm sure I love you what they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm sure you have. I just, I just wanted to just throw that yeah. out there because obviously I'm more of an they audio, are. yeah, more of an audio kind of guy. So I've yeah, I mean, yeah, you can grab your audio as well. Yeah, yeah I've, I've listened to a lot, a lot of their audios. Um, the, 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 the um, the, the CEOs and the guys who, who started it, basically. Mm. And um, yeah, I, I listen to all of them because yeah, you, you, if you want to be the best, then you, you got to try to emulate what the best is doing. And oh, try definitely. To, to, to do what it is. So, and that's always been my motto. You know, I, I, I'm never going to do anything half-heartedly or as, you know, as I tell my own children, if you're going to step, step fully, step, you know, step proper, don't step, don't do no half step. So I'm, I'm here to do this properly. Again, you know, I, I want to bring in the, the key element, as I said, is team. So, uh, you know, this is not, so I'm looking to just be the man at the top. And really, I want to kind of focus on the finances and that sort of stuff and that kind of stuff. But um, I really do want to bring in some really visionary and creative young people, people with people with the skills that can really develop this platform. And one of the key, key aspects of developing this, 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 this um, platform is us also creating our own content, similar to what Netflix is doing. And that's one of the key things for me. You know, in, in the next couple few years, I would like to be financing our own short films feature films, um, you know, talk shows, um, you know, re reality shows or whatever. So we and, and produce our own content. So we're not dependent on content owned by other, other distributors. We have our own content on there and we're making money from our own content, you know? So then that's why the key, key focuses for me as well as the archive. Everything else is, is um, so almost, you know, it's not fluff, I would say, but it, 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 it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's just added, it, it added, you know, having the mainstream stuff on films on there, which we do now, that's added stuff. But the key thing is producing our own content. That's key. And also the archive, you know. Good luck with everything, um, Marlon. I know that you're going to push all the way to the end or to the point where you feel you've delivered that, that, that vision in your mind. Um, is there anything else you want to leave the viewers with? I'm sure people are going to be screaming, what can I watch now? What can I watch now? When does it go live? Well, no, it's live now. It's live. We, we've, we've done a soft launch. We did a soft launch of it. So, so and we got some of our members and people who donate to our fundraising campaign. Because also I, I had set up a fundraising campaign during the COVID when we were locked down, when there was no income, no money. And, you know, we raised about, we raised about £7,000. Over £7,000 we raised, um, which kind of helped push to kind of get back on its feet and to kind of get moving again and to kind of kick off this project. So 
Kush Cinema, K-U-S-H, KushCinema.com is live now. Um, we're going to start making a, a more, you know, a lot, a lot more noise this week from this week onwards, um, starting the 20th of November and through Christmas. And there are films on there. We've done deals with the BFI, we've done build films, um, deals with Verve Pictures, a number of independent film filmmakers as well. So a lot of films that's been totally forgotten about, you know, films like Emotional Backgammon, films like Chirps by Colton Lee, Emotional Backgammon by Leon Herbert, films um, like um, my good friend, a naked poet with Jason Barrett. Um, we, we've got some good, great independent films that people that's been totally forgotten about. You know, um, you know, we've been making films for how long, as I said, and it's just been, to- they've been forgotten about and people just keep rewriting the history. So we've got good films on there. We've got Freddie Nowaka's film, uh, She's the One on there. We've got, um, what films have we got on there? We've got, um, we've got a good little section of, of films on there at the moment. But, you know, I'm looking to be bringing new films on a monthly basis, you know, adding, you know, 10, 20 films to the platform every month as we do we're going to refresh the content bring bring new content on there and we're looking for content from filmmakers so filmmakers have quality productions that they have um short films that are not really on youtube um exclusive content we're looking for and also independent feature films new and old we're looking for that so kush you know kush cinema is live now and we want people to support, we want people to go on there, support what we're doing and help us grow this into an internationally recognised black British platform showcasing black films around the globe, you know? So yeah, yes, my brother. Okay. And yeah, just to say uh, quickly, to, as well, finishing off, uh, Kush, um, the film boutique, our film club, we are looking now, um, again, I'm, I'm stepping back from that. So I'm looking to kind of hand it over now. I'm trying to, bring in some young people to kind of run that platform for us, um, take over the platform under the Kush brand, but let them bring the creative, the creativity, the energy, the vision. And, um, you know, I, I want to, you know, give them the, 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 uh, the venues that we have, the, the contacts that we have, the relationships that, that I have with the film distributors, get the films and, you know, nurture, bring, you know, start entertaining a new younger audience as well and nurturing. I, you know, I want the legacy of the Kush Film Boutique, the Kush Film Club to carry on. It's been going on for 23 years. It is, it is what started everything. And I would like to be able to, be able to carry that on again, probably, you know, hopefully, maybe long after I've, I've left this planet, it's still going on, basically. And this is one of the key things, you know, as, again, as Black people, what we need to do is, is, is stop clinging on to things and pass it down, pass it back, and let others carry on the legacy so it continues and, and don't let it die, take it to the grave with you, you know? So, you know, so, yeah, that's it. God bless, yeah? Thank you very much. <laughs>